we've seen that many can well not not many some canadian officials uh have walked back their authoritarian uh stance their authoritarian covid stance um so that happened i think in 2023 last year that some were starting to come out and say this was not good we we should not have done this but have you seen uh, a lessening it a staying of the same or an increase of attacks on religious freedoms this year. Yeah, we have more attacks on our liberties for sure. Just like I said at the very beginning, I said, don't you think that when this test is over, another one will not come? And I was right. Uh, they are passing laws that you cannot criticize government. They're passing laws that you're not allowed to um, do certain things that are fundamentally guaranteed in every democratic society. Uh, so they're not done. Uh, right now we have an attack on our food supplies. Farmers are being wiped out with bylaws, with all kinds of red tape, uh, increased um, carbon tax. Uh, all those different things are being unleashed on, on our liberties. And all of that is done deliberately. You got to remember, if you want to understand what's going on, you have to know history. They have a plan. They're implementing this plan methodically. And I, I said to people, what is going to happen? Uh, at that time, to, not many w were willing to listen, uh, but they're wiping out the middle class. They are creating two categories of people, extremely powerful, the elites that uh, will own everything. And of course, the slaves, you own nothing and you will be happy eating crickets while they are flying private jets, uh, driving SUVs. And uh, like in your instance, the same man that is telling you all of that garbage uh, has become the biggest landowner in the United States of America. That's Bill right. Gates. That's so right. you got to pay attention what is going on because they're doing this. They're not even hiding anymore. They're not hiding their plans. They want to eliminate uh, billions of people. And uh, Gates said it multiple times that he's going to use vaccination for that purpose. I, I just don't understand why people are not seeing it. So um, the attack is still ongoing. That's why we have to push harder. We have to fight harder. And I'm not talking about violence. A Polish solidarity that took down the biggest empire at that time, the Soviet, uh, Soviet empire, um, we were not using guns and swords and planes and tongues. The sheer number of people. We, uh, at the beginning in 1980, we had about a million people that joined us. In 82, we had 3 million people that joined us. The government outlawed solidarity, and we grew to 10 million. In 1989, we had 10 million members, and it was over for the Soviets. I always said to the American people and to the Canadian people, give me enough Canadians, and I will give you back your liberty and your prosperity. Give me enough Americans, and I will give you back. Uh, you know, make America great again as your great slogan. Uh, that is being used, it's it's not a brainer. You just leave the people alone, cut the spending. There's enough money in the coffers. It's just those uh, resources are being wasted by crooks that I said many times, if I was your king, many of those people would be charged with treason. You've talked about the solidarity movement several times. Is that a political movement? Well, uh, Solidarity Movement was everything. It was people coming together, organizing. It was um, a labor union originally, because that's the only thing that was allowed. But of course, in the end of the day, it's a political movement as well, because only through politics or being involved in political realm, you can actually make a tangible change. If you're not going to replace the crooks with good people, well, don't expect changes happening in your country. Uh, I, again, I said that before, we deserve the government that we have because the churches were apathetic, uninterested. They were not willing to participate in, a, in their civil duties. Uh, pastors were not engaging. They were not encouraging people to vote for good candidates. So they have demon-possessed, bloody, psychopathic murderers. And, and I'm not surprised that we have government like that because 
the light refused to shine. So Solidarity Movement was a, originally a union movement that gathered 10 million people and formed the government. In 1989, there was the first free and democratic elections since the invasion of the Germans in 1939. And then, of course, Poland was taken over, subjugated and enslaved by the Soviets in 1945. And in 1989, Poland was liberated by the Solidarity Movement. I've created the same thing in Canada. I created a copy-paste, you know, why reinvent the wheel if the one worked? Because you got to remember what the villains are doing right now. They're copy and paste as well. They know history and they're implementing the same identical tactics. They are even using the same words from the Nazi era and from the Soviet era. So I said to the people, if the tactics of the evil works for them, well, the tactics of the good people during that time will work as well. And so I created a Solidarity Movement of Canada, that's CA, and then I've created actually a political party, which I'm still a leader of, called Solidarity Movement of Alberta, that's CA, Solidarity Movement of Alberta. And we did it, we created this party within 98, nine days, which was a complete miracle. Um, so the problem we're facing, uh, I think you are facing a very similar problem. We have a uni party. Um, which is the same people, different colors, leading us to the same slaughterhouse. Some of those parties are leading us to the slaughterhouse slower. Others want to kill us like right away. So we have liberals with our prime minister, uh, Justin Trudeau Castro Caligula, as I call him. Uh, he, a liberal party is like a Nazi party. They're completely crazy, evil, wicked, bloody murders. Then you've got the NDP. NDP is a socialist, communist party. Um, they are, they're psychopaths. They're crazy. They're communists to the core. They're socialists. And they want big government that um, will enslave everyone. We are to be their slaves. That's, that's the whole idea. And then you've got the so-called conservatives. They're like your rhinos. Um, you know, you've got your democrats, as I call them, democrats. And then you've got your uh, republicans. However, in our country, we do not have Republicans anymore. We got rhinos. We got sold out, compromised, corrupted to the core, so-called conservatives that are not conservatives at all. So the problem we're facing in Canada is that people are used to voting for the same people. It's a revolving door. So every 10 years or so, uh, we would vote for the Nazis, and then we would vote for the communists, and then we would vote for the conservatives. And, and it's like a revolving door, all the time the same thing. And um, we're getting worse, in worse shape than ever. And that's exactly what we're saying is seeing right now. Uh, we had an election last year, and believe it or not, I, I know this will be hard for you to believe, but the same government that locked the people in Alberta murdered their elderly and their children, got elected again into power. It's, it's beyond me. I don't get it. I don't understand. Because the people told me we have to elect the lesser of two evils. And I said, no, that's the problem. You don't elect evil at all. You look for good people, new parties. You never vote for the lesser of two evils. You always vote for a good candidate. Another perfect one, don't get me wrong, there is no such a thing as a perfect man. Only Jesus is perfect. Only God is holy. We all are messed up sinners saved by grace and grace alone. But at least you need to find a candidate that wants to bless you, not to curse you. That wants to give you, not take away from you. Um, and we've lost that. We have evil, wicked rulers on all levels of government and the corruption. If I start telling you what I know about corruption, your hair would stand up and you would say, I don't want to believe this. This is so horrible. The corruption that I saw under Soviets was nothing in comparison to what I see in Canada right now.